We are live, I believe, Lassa. We are live, okay. I have to remember not to swear too much. <laughs> so welcome everyone to our songwriting circle. We are celebrating Black History Month as part of tonight's event. And uh, this is a very special lineup we have for you. Um, those of you might have been here well long enough to know who I am. I'm Anjali Paramparaja, otherwise known as Pokisham. And I'm a songwriting tutor here um, at the Institute, and I'm hosting all of you for this evening. Welcome, welcome. And we have an amazing mix of students who are on different programs here, and then I'm going to let them all introduce themselves to you when it's um, their turn to present their wonderful work. And we are extremely lucky. Um, I'm a bit of a fangirl, I won't lie, um, to have the wonderful Michelle Iscoffrey as our guest tonight. <laughs> And her wonderful guitar player, Dave. Dave is here to show us how the guitar should be played. And uh, yeah, so the format of this, guys, it's something that was set up a, a few years ago. We are also live on YouTube, so hello to everybody watching us, all the millions that are watching from their homes across the UK. Um, this was set up to kind of present a similar format to what you find back in the amazing place known as Nashville, where songwriters present kind of stripped down versions of songs they've written, sometimes for other artists that may have gone on to become quite big produced hits. Um, and it's all about bringing it back to kind of the raw song and the journey and the process behind the song. And we do that in the round and everyone takes their cue uh, one after the other. Sometimes the choice of song is influenced by the other people that are playing on the round and the kind of songs that they are performing. Um, sometimes not, so there might be a little flow. We might sometimes have people feeling like they want to get involved. You can whoop, you can holler, you can stroke us gently. Um, and you can also sing along if there's, you know, a little bit of a BV vibe going on. We're okay with that. Just make sure you're in tune, please. <laughs> um, you will be, because you're at ICMP, y'all. So it's all good. Um, so, yeah, without further ado, I am going to start this round with a tune of mine called Borrowed Time. Um, it's a single that I'm releasing in a couple of weeks and uh, because I'm a little bit, just a tiny bit older than some of you guys here, just by about a few months, um, this is quite a mature kind of breakup song. It's not very dramatic. It's, it's about kind of a relationship that kind of just slowly kind of falls apart and you're kind of calling time on it and saying, you know what, this is, this is done. This is like a cumulative thing that's just been happening over a while and we can't really fix it. Um, so we're kind of living and loving on borrowed time. And my band call it my Elton John song. You'll see kind of why. Um, and yeah, this is it. Thank you. Oh, I love it. You're clapping on. I don't have to do anything. This is amazing. That's the song, guys. That was it. I play it's like one chord. It's a new musical form for TikTok. Just one, one, one chord. 15 seconds. Here goes. Oh, the pain is gonna be free flowing. Oh, this pain is gonna be free flowing. Oh, the pain is gonna be free. Ourselves, we thought 
we had it made No losers left, our best hand has been played Tried to fix all of the broken parts Too many smithereens to mend our hearts We tried to find the places we've worked so well before Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Whew. One down. <laughs> Thanks very much, guys. That's a tune called Borrowed Time. And you can find more about me at Pockisham, which is my new artist name. I have virtually no Instagram followers, so please be my friend. Um, now, in terms of friends, this is someone I want to be friends with. This is the wonderful Leo. Um, we've got quite a treat from Leo. Um, Leo is on our undergraduate BASW program. We've got a bit of a piano swaparoonie happening tonight. She's uh, not only doing a piano tune, but also we're going to hear from her later with her cello, which is, yeah, I know, exactly. So, Leo, do you want to tell us a little bit about the song you're going to do or not? You can jump straight into it, whatever works. Um, I'm Leo Lumunga. Um, I'm in first year. I'm doing the first year songwriting course, and I will play my first song, which is Brown Skin Girl. Um, it's kind of like because the task was one month ago to write about identity, and for me it was kind of like difficult, like to identify myself like being black or white because I grew up in Germany. And with my m white mother, so I kind of felt pretty white. Um, but I wasn't really treated white, like more black, so kind of that's what the song is about, I guess. So, yeah. <laughs> Doesn't know which way to go. 
the wonderful, mesmerising Leo. Absolutely beautiful. Wow, what's that? Is it a metronome? <laughs> I was like, we've set up a beat, beat for you, Ento. Yeah. That was just what we needed after that performance, yeah. <laughs> beautiful, Leo. Go away, you're too good. Right, so... <laughs> no, we've got amazing people tonight. Really amazing people. So we have... Also now, the wonderful Antonia to, uh, to play your song. What are you going to play yeah. for us, my love? Um, okay, so the song I'm going to play is called Moonlight. Um, I wrote it about a year ago, but um, I've decided to kind of change it up. Um, so yeah, I hope you like it. <laughs> and hopefully I don't mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> So Thank you. 
Beautiful, Antonia. It, Thank you. Yeah, it needs a lot of work. So. I don't know, man. Like, I, I think we're pretty transfixed there. This is just spellbinding. It's beautiful. Really, really chuffed to be in this company tonight. <laughs> so moving on, we've got Abhinav, or Abby, who's joined our master's program, I believe, quite recently. So, um, yeah, we're looking forward to hearing some guitar. And, uh, yeah, is there anything you'd like to tell us about yeah. your song? Yeah, I'm Abhinav. I'm Avi for many. And I also go by my artist's name, which is Tenzin. And the song I like to share today is um, inspired by a sh romantic fling that I had, which felt too good to be true. And lo and behold, it was. Oh. Uh, it ended very briefly. And it reminded me of these stories, these myths about Greek gods who'd come to Earth, take some natural form, and romance humans, and then leave briefly after. Um, and because we are so weak compared to gods, we succumb to their powers. We, you know, get hypnotized and they get the most of us, I guess. And um, I think I made this relation because I had a very religious upbringing. So some of the early songs, music that I played and sang was, was religious hymns. And um, so the connection between sort of love, romantic music and... Uh, religious music, I find there's a common theme of devotion and submission, which was like the guiding principle of this of this song. And I think these two ideas, devotion and submission, it's a, a state in which we're incredibly vulnerable, in which you know we feel really weak. And so, by me romanticizing, bringing up, making up this entire story, I think for me in reflection was for a way to explain my vulnerability because I think in my mind I'm this really tough guy who like is really hard to get through and I don't simp for anyone. But <laughs> um, so the only explanation as to why I felt this way about this person could be was that there's some kind of Greek god personified. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then it got me thinking about like how we sometimes use these external ideas and stories, make up stories to maybe justify some of our very uh, human, but maybe like flawed uh, emotions and states and qualities like lust and greed and envy. I mean, it's easy to say I did all that for love rather than saying I did all that because, you know, I'm hungry for affection. <laughs> and um, yeah, so reflecting on it, I think pretending I was a victim in this Greek tragedy was me just brushing off the fact that I'm a simp. <laughs> um, yeah. And this, so this story, so this song takes place after the initial incident happened and this person came into my life briefly. And um, that's where this song starts. <laughs> Again. 
of your sweet voice it's whispering that enchantment I recall and this time I yield hope and take me for once and all Remind us again, your artist name is Tenzing. How do we spell yeah. that? T-E-N-Z-I-N. T-E-N-Z-I-N. Okay, people. Yeah. Oh, on Instagram is like Tenzin Tree. T R W. Yeah. I have to get with the with the program with all this Instagram stuff. So I'm just making sure that everyone knows how to find the lovely people playing it tonight. Because although we're here at ICMP, not everyone rubs shoulders with each other because we're all on different courses in on different days. Um, yeah, so. be my friend on Instagram. I like how you said friend instead of follow me on Instagram. Oh, yeah. I think because... <laughs> Can you, you the Masters Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> oh. I like it. Right. Yeah. yeah. No, definitely. Because if we follow each other, we're friends. We're not following each other. So, <laughs> yeah. It's deep, man. Oh, You're going yeah, deep. Man. Yeah. I'm friends with Michelle, but actually I just adore her from a distance through social media. <laughs> and only now she's like, who is this chatty person? <laughs> now, I know who the next person is, because I taught him last year, and we were on teams, and I never realised people yeah, how tall he is, because everyone sees me in the corridor from that class, and they're like, we didn't realise how small you are. That's never something just to say, people. Don't say that out loud, okay? You can think it, but don't say that. But Kai just always used to soothe us on a Friday with his beautiful voice and his lush jazzy chords. Yeah, we've got a few of Group 5 in the house here. Fangirls! Yeah, so uh, you're all going to be fans by the end of this. I know it. No pressure. So Kai, my love, what are you going to play for us? Hi. <laughs> um, my name's Kai, but um, I go, like, my artist name is Kai Rowe. I kind of go by Kai Rowe a lot. Um, and the song I'm gonna sing for you today is called Home, and it's basically about um, just it's I had in oh yeah I do songwriting and like in our yes B A B A student and in our first year we got challenged to do like an identity song, so this was my identity song and I just thought um, I don't know um, I kind of got taken back to when I was young and my mum would always take me and my brother to like the Caribbean to Jamaica and um, I think going to Jamaica was the first time I saw just like well black people to be honest and I felt at home so that is why I thought it was quite fitting to do it today being certain that it is in honoration of yeah. black history month so yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you.
as I sit here, I remember the weather. Won't you be as one failure? Long drives by the main road, destination we don't know. Long talks about how your day go. good because I don't know what to say. It's just like, oh, just need to have a shower now. Come hey. on, come on. That was beautiful. Cairo, amazing, Kai at home. What a beautiful interpretation of that brief. Yeah. I love that one because when I've, I've heard lots of songs from that, that identity brief and just how the interpretations are so varied. Um, and I know you might not be doing this one, but you had your song, Michelle, didn't you? Was it La La Love? That was, oh. some of the video was in, was that in Jamaica as yes. well? A little bit of filming going yeah, yeah, on there? Yeah, that was like an ode. I forgot about that. You don't know that song, do you? It's a proper oh, I'm mate. a proper fan. I'm like. Yeah, so my heritage is Jamaican. My parents are Jamaican. And um, I went to Jamaica in 2019. Oh, wow. I took my husband, who's Nigerian, to Jamaica in 2019. And it was just like, it was such a it was such a surreal experience because we went to Nigeria in 2018. Oh wow! And then he came in 2019 like to turn. Jamaica, right? <laughs> so when he arrived, he was like, "This is Nigeria." And I was like, "No, brother, no. this no. is Jamaica." No. And it was it was so la la la. It's like yeah. an ode to Jamaica. It's so, beautiful. Yeah. No, I, and uh, all the footage is is from there. In Kingston, Kingston, yeah. Blue Mountains. Portland, St. Thomas, so, and it's all the places that my family are from, so, yeah, I get That's it. That's beautiful. So, yeah, I mean, Michelle's like, when you look at her career portfolio, it spells out badass, yeah, basically, right. like, you do, bit, you do a bit of everything, right? I mean, is there anything yeah. you don't do? Yeah, I don't, I don't really play an instrument. I, I train classically in piano. Oh, yeah. Um, and I trained classically vocally when I was young. Beautiful. And I obviously grew up in, you know, gospel background. Yeah. Um, but I don't play. And so I'm sitting here with green. I'm so green. Envy. I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But Dave's like, I'm really but grateful. But here. thank you. Like I have a rock. job. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Dave's here on guitar. Yeah. So what, is you, what are you going to treat us to first? <sighs> All right, so um, so this song this song is called Complicated Disaster, <laughs> and um, like like Anjali, I'm like just a little bit older than you guys, just a tad. Um, so this this song was written from the point of view of a woman that's been in, in a that is in a long term relationship, and her partner has cheated on her. But not only has he cheated on her, he's told a, a whole he's made up a whole story, a whole lie. <laughs> And the other woman has sought her out. So now they know about each other. Wow. And it's kind of like, shit, I should really leave, but 
it's complicated. This is a disaster. <laughs> so it's called Complicated Disaster. Uh, if I remember correctly, I think I wrote this song. Oh, God. I want to say 2004, maybe, with a producer called Steve Robson. Again, um, in honor of Black History Month, um, this is this is for me breaking out of the boundaries because as a black woman and as a songwriter, you get pigeonholed. Mm. So the instant thing is, oh, you must write R and B, and it's like, actually, <laughs> no, I write a lot of things. So this is more of a rock feel, and we wrote this song, and then when we finished writing the song, it was like, this would be amazing for Tina Turner. This would be an amazing song. So we actually pitched it, but um, she had gone into retirement, and it was like, oh, what? Mm -hmm. And then a year later, she changed her mind. Mm -hmm. And she actually contacted us Ooh. and was like, yeah, that song you did, I really want to do that song, and I want to put it on the Greatest Hits album. So it was like surreal. And then she also, she re-recorded it, I think a semitone or a tone up. <laughs> which nearly killed me, because we did the, <laughs> I, I did the, the backing vocals. Oh. No, I didn't have to do the guy, thank God. I did the guy, like, <laughs> a tone down. <laughs> but I had to go back in and redo the um, backing vocals. But yeah, so this song's called Complicated Design. Thank you. 
by the second chorus, a few of us were singing on Complicated Disaster. But I love it. I turn away, but I can't run. What a line. Songwriters. Yeah. Just it's true. Uh, you get stuck in relationships. Yeah, you're, you're like, like... You want to leave, but there's so much history there that you end up saying. Yeah. Get out! <laughs> <laughs> what was it like on the day you found out Tina was going to take it on and, and, and you're going to get a cut on her greatest hits? Like, mm. what did you do at that point? Did you pinch yourself? Did you scream? I think I cried, actually. Yeah. I think I cried, like, oh, my God. Tina Turner. I know, but you've yeah. played with you, and you've played and worked with, I and mean, you've been a star in your own right, and with your your family group, your Discoveries, and Artful Dodger. Like none of you will remember that, but I, I grew I up was when I was your age. I was clubbing that as to that. In, I'm like, no, RTM. <laughs> <laughs> Not me. I was there clubbing in Manchester. Anyway, yes. but um, but yeah, I mean, you've worked with and written for so many people, right? And now a writer director at PRS. It's yeah. just yeah. incredible. Yeah, it's a great journey, you know, and it's. Um, in terms of writing songs, it's really about telling that story, being that storyteller. What I love about working with artists is that you get to get inside of their mm. experience, yeah. inside of their head. So for me, I'm a tea and cake girl, so I never start a session without tea and cake. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Simple. Yeah. And I try to meet the artist first before I yeah. work with them. So I want to sit down with them and chill and just really get to understand who they are and what's going on and where they are, not only in their career, but where they are in their life. Because there's always personal moments that mm. they have that sometimes they don't even realize they've told you. And it's like, oh, I'm going through this with this person or I've been, I've anything, you know, or I'm so tired. I've been on tour all year and I'm just like fried. And it's like, oh. Yeah, <laughs> accidental counselling. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah, yeah. So it, for me, that's I people watch a lot, and I kind of take people's experiences and then put it into song. Beautiful. And what have you got upcoming next? What What are you working on at the moment? Can we know? Are we allowed to know? Sure. Um, <laughs> so um, I, I used to work. Can, am I allowed to speak about other establishments? Or what? <laughs> as long as you slag them off, it's fine. Right? Uh, <laughs> so I used to be module lead on the MA oh, at right. Tal Yard. Oh, yeah. And some oh, of the no, students... Tal, we like Tal, yeah. yeah, so some of the <laughs> alumni... We, I have a, a production company with my husband, mm. so we've been working with some of those writers, and we've just finished an album, okay. um, so we'll be releasing next year, and I've been working with my cousin Sean. Yes, yes, And yeah. um, we'll be putting some of his stuff out next year. So, yeah, we've been kind of busy. Good. <laughs> But it's been good. Pandemic yeah. didn't slow you down then? I thought it would. <laughs> I thought it would. And I don't know, it, it kind of made us get even more creative. I think because it's like, wow, yeah. there's no other distractions. Now we can, my husband went crazy. He was like, let's write a song a day. And I'm like, uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we did it for like maybe, maybe two months. We wrote a song a day. Wow. And then I was okay. like, okay, I'm tired. Yeah. So Tea and cake two months now, right? Yeah, exactly. That's Process. Not, it's not the one, right? <laughs> So, um, yeah, so we've been working on that project, so okay. that will come out next year. And I'm excited for some of the new writers that are coming through as well. Yeah, well you've always championed it. I remember Kindred Spirit. and Always, always will. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so here. inspired, by the way, <laughs> from everything that I'm hearing. I'm so inspired. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I think it's mutual. <laughs> um, all right, well, I'm, we're, gonna, we're not taking a, a break, guys. We're doing yeah. another round. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Well, should we take, should we, can we do a five minute? Yeah. Five minutes and then back. Because yeah, yeah. I need you on the next song. Yeah. Five yeah. minutes. That is five minutes, my lovely ICMP. Yeah.
those of you rather watching on uh, on the YouTube live stream, we are back. We've had a scintillating first round. I cannot wait to hear everyone's second songs. And um, yeah, just I'm going to get a bit of audience participation on the next one. I'll, it's very easy, so you can all join in without worrying about what you're doing next to the person sitting next to you. Um, and it was interesting what Michelle was saying. Michelle was saying about you know sometimes you can get pigeonholed and. I totally hear you on that. And uh, I am a Sri Lankan girl who grew up loving funk and soul and jazz. So make that work. Um, well, I have, and it's been great, but I also wanted to be true to my songwriting, and that's been quite a journey, just understanding what different songs come out of all of us. And actually, I don't think in genre. The song <coughs> just kind of happens, and then I go, oh, I guess it sounds like that. And then someone else will be like, oh, it's that. And I'm like, who knows? <laughs> who knows? So this song is interesting, because actually, I didn't intend it to... to I wrote it about a situation that meant a lot to me, and because it's Black History Month, I'm playing this. Some of you will have heard this one before. Um, and basically the heart of this song that I wrote a few years ago was just my anger. I'm a British Sri Lankan. My parents came from Sri Lanka, settled here in England back in the 60s. Um, and during the time they've been in England, they had to see a huge civil war going on back in Sri Lanka, and it made me very aware I was living and growing up in those two different cultures. Um, and it also made me aware of history, and although I am proud to be British, I'm also very aware of the sense of ownership that much of the Western world has had in many countries, be it Australia, when I went and lived in Australia, I saw the Aboriginal culture and how that's being kind of decimated a lot, and now is slowly coming back into some kind of form of recognition, but still feels deeply unfair, the same with the Native American Indian. And the same with many countries, Sri Lanka being one, um, taken over, turned on its head, and then kind of left in tatters. So I wrote this song really inspired by, by that idea, but also the idea of sometimes people in power also giving over their people and their culture quite willingly for their own gain. And so that's what this, this song is about. It's called These Men. And for this, because I felt it was appropriate, I wanted to spin a little bit of my musical love of, uh, of Indian Carnatic music, just a little bit at the start, and then kind of fuse it with a little bit more of a groove. So I'm going to ask you all to just basically be a human drone, mm -hmm. not the drone that flies over the, the sky, unless you've, you've had something. But I just mean in terms of the notes, I'm just giving you a C. Mm -hmm. Pick one of those. Mm -hmm. And you're going to be like a super goose down kind of duvet vibe and I'm going to get Leo to get it on the cello as well so keep it going people I need it louder travel over the land looking for plumes to steal many times your song is sung when you are young your song is sung but your sound is Your petals 
one by one, oh one by one, how easily you slip so easily, they can't believe their Thank you, Leo. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Really appreciate everyone joining in on that one. Droning in. So, without further ado, I'm going to pass the spotlight over to the wonderful Leo here, who is, as if her beautiful voice and piano playing and songwriting isn't enough, she now is whipping out the cello, just like that. Whip of cello and um, <laughs> and Leo, I believe is this a song you wrote quite recently? Uh, or last week. <laughs> okay, yes, ridiculous, no like amazing. I wrote a song of cello. Yeah. Uh, 
um, maybe you can either you tell us a little bit about it or um, or just launch straight in, my lovely. What have a word? Um, so the task last week was um, to write a love song. So it's just a normal love song, I would say. <laughs> It's not going to be a normal love song, is uh, it? Yeah, no, it's a love song, <laughs> as always. Um, and, yeah, so basically if you can join, um, this will be like an ending, and it goes like that. So you can sing along. Mm -hmm. Just turn out way. Love so beautiful, so bittersweet, can't get enough of you feel my heart beat love so beautiful so bittersweet can't get enough of you feel my heart beat love so beautiful so bittersweet can't get enough of you feel my heart beat love so beautiful so bittersweet can't get enough of Sweet. 
beautiful, Leo. Really, um, they don't sound like songs that have just been written for briefs, do they at all? Just mm -hmm. you embody it completely. Thank you so much. And what a treat to have the cello. Do we have any other string players in the audience? You're right, okay, everyone's coming to you. <laughs> for, oh, yeah, yeah? Uh-huh. Yeah, speak now. I'll forever hold your, your string. But um, thank you, Leo. Can we find your music anywhere, or do you have anywhere we can find you and stalk you gently? <laughs> Instagram and Spotify, it's like Leo Lemunga. Lemunga, beautiful. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leo. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> now, I would not want to follow that, personally, <laughs> but I know someone who can and will and is going to be beautiful. It's the lovely, lovely Antonia, who's got a program leader, like, you know, just coming and playing some piano like he does. Um, so we've sure. got the lovely Shane. Most of you will know Shane Beals, our wonderful BA program leader, BASW program leader. Let's give it a shout out. <laughs> and yeah, so Antonio, um, tell us, could you tell us a little bit about your song? Cool. Uh, yeah, so this song is called Green Eyes. So I initially wrote it as a joke, um, <laughs> but I kind of liked it and I kept going and yeah, hopefully I get all the way through this. <laughs> So first things first, this ain't no competition I don't abide the system, just like my use of rhythm I don't need your fake permission Yeah, they be in their feelings, I'm on tunnel vision Even taking L's, I'm winning Shots to real precision, me and you are different What's the matter? Real big actor did I stutter? Did, 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 this ain't the Baptist. Yeah, I don't need no recognition. Every day's a new audition. Here comes the intermission. I got so many friends, but I wipe my own tears. You can join in if you like. Said I've got so many friends, still I wipe my own tears. Yeah, I got so many friends, so I wipe my own. I'm all by myself. Oh, I got so many friends, so I wipe my own tears. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're the type to say don't wear that, then turn up in the same shit. Yeah, I don't want a name job. Yeah. But if the shoe fits, you know that I was the new kid. So come winning, but you're losing. Everybody knows the type. Baby got them green eyes. I'm sorry you're not winning in this personality race. I stumble to every turn, and you're still not at my pace. Slow down, take time, chill out, don't cry. I got so many friends, but I wipe my own tears, yeah. Said I've got so many friends, so I wipe my own tears, yeah, 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 yeah. I got so many friends, so I wipe my own, I'm all by myself, oh. I got so many friends, till I wipe my own tears, yeah. Yeah, yeah, why you mad? Yeah, fix your face. Yeah, that's the race. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, Amen. I know you're mad. So mad. Yeah. One more time. Said I got so many friends, but I wipe my own tears. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I got so many friends, so I wipe my own tears. Yeah, 
I got so many friends, so I wipe my own. I'm all by myself. Oh, I got so many friends, so I wipe my own tears. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm so glad you continued writing that song. Thanks, Dave, as well, for yeah. being a true pro and jumping in just effortlessly like that's how you rehearsed it. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank you, Antonio. Yeah. It's funny, though, isn't it? With, with like, we're such terrible self-critics. We should never trust our own judgment on binning things or not doing things. And it's a hard voice to get rid of, that censor. But... Um, but sometimes it allows you to have fun with something in a way without being too serious about it. And then something amazing comes out of it. Mm. So thank you so much for thank that song. You. It's beautiful. That's on Spotify. Yeah. Is it on Spotify? Oh, my wow. goodness. We're all going to be singing that on the way home. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So beautiful. Thank, thank you. you. So moving on now um, to Abhinav. Abby, Tenzin. I've got it all. Is that all right? Three. Have I got them all? Yeah. Good. I'm there. And uh, yeah, what... Do okay. you think you know what to say? Yeah, so this uh, next song is a work in progress. So I shared it with my tutor this morning. Oh, wow. And Super she fresh. <laughs> yeah, Shiny. and she said the chord structure is a bit boring. Spoiler alert. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm not going to name I'm not going to name Wow, it, I thought that was my job. No. Is someone else? Um, chord but, but the song is about being in a crowded room and not feeling like you belong there. Um, it can be a party, a gig, or some conference, or just out in public. And I don't know, you just meet someone, or someone starts playing a song, or music comes on, and then you suddenly don't feel alone anymore for that brief moment. Um, because I think we all crave connection, deep connections. But when we're in this sort of busy environment, we're expected to sort of be bright and, I don't know, cheerful. And um, it can be difficult in those situations to find something deeply meaningful. So the song is about that. And I know it's kind of meta because we're in a crowded room and then everyone's like singing and performing. But um, yeah, it, it was inspired by a real experience I had that took place at a New Year's, New Year's Eve party. I walk through the door, parties are all, sparkling drinks keep the spirit afloat, oh, minutes to midnight, we gather up outside, rejoice that the lights, clear the night sky, but there's a sinking feeling I can't ignore, heavy on my chest.
Grabby. Beautiful. Can, can I do a quick request? Um, sorry. Yeah, well, well, it depends, it depends what, oh. what you're going to ask. Yeah, exactly. Oh, no, no, I just want to say, well, I'm new to this institution and I'm a songwriter. And I'd love to collaborate and meet new people. So if, you, you know, if you're an instrumentalist, uh, musician, writer, producer, uh, come say hi or drop me a message and um, let's make some music. That is a very fair point to make. Yeah, that's definitely an okay request. Because we do want to do more of that now that we actually can be yes. in person for things. This time last year I was online doing this and you know, all of us that were here last year were online doing this. So, uh, so now we can get that beauty of actual connection in a room. Then uh, yeah, let's do that. So you will be inundated, I'm sure, with all the oh people geez. who are here. Like, like, here's our number. Um, so, moving on. Thanks, Abby. On to Kai Rowe. Hi. Hi, there he is, there he is. Hi. Um, um. Yeah, I love that Kai's been in lessons all day and literally got here just in the nick of time to quickly line check. And obviously he doesn't even need to do that because he just sounds heavenly. Oh, stop it. It's true. <laughs> I'm not the only one. Like, there's a lot of Kai Rowe fans here. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. You, yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah, she said it, she said it. Um, Kai, can I just ask you though, my darling, so we can actually find you and stalk you, is it okay. Cairo as in K-A-I-R-O-W-E, no. or have you gone for Cairo, e Egypt? Yeah, Cairo, Egypt. Right, that's easier? Yeah. So well done. And so Cairo, that's, that's like my government name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too sure about the whole government name thing. <laughs> it just reminds me of like X Factor. Oh yeah. Like, but I don't know, um, I wanted to do the Egypt vibe because I think it looks cool. And like, yeah, it's easier and it's better for Instagram. But yeah, this next tune that I'm gonna sing is a bit sad. Um, yeah. We're okay with that. It's We're ready to cry. We're ready to cry. It's a bit sad, but um, it's basically just about just a relationship that you, it's like you're at the point where it's like, okay, cool, I'm going, I'm going, I'm going, but then it's like they find you, and it's kind of the um, the chorus is, I just basically say, what road did you go down? And um, I wanted to just leave it as that. And it's kind of like, what road did you go down to find me while I was running away from you? Mm, what yeah. road did you go down to make you the person that you are? And what road did we go down for us to even be in a relationship, for us to even be here? So, I feel like I'm in a place where I can recite the song. So I thought it would be good for Songwriter Circle because this is a place for sharing songs. And yeah, so here's the tune. <laughs> it's called In The Water. I hope you guys enjoy it. This body bears bruises. I still keep running, keep humming. The shaking, the brace, the grip and pull. Oh, each 
tries to save me from my saving grace. So I'm waiting in the water, feel safe in the water. I pray for rain to send him home. There's no way he'll find me hope and pray in the water, feel safe in the water. There's no way he'll find me hope. There's no way he'll. There's no way he'll find me, no. I'm in the water, I'm in the water, I'm in the water. I let go in the water. I let go in the water. Yeah, I let go in the water. been very special tonight to have this level of talent at the songwriter circle remind me never to host another one again <laughs> it's absolutely beautiful can i also say before we are very lucky to be treated to a few songs I'm from going home. no you're no, not I'm done. no I'm you're not girl sing it you're the, gonna the sing night it. is over <laughs> <laughs> no it's all beautiful um i the night is not over and the people that have made it last and work are uh, sitting either side of me here. We've got the wonderful Lassa over there. <laughs> Lassa Chorus. He's kind of like the, uh, the army general here. Like he puts everything in place, but you know, and just does it all and makes it all happen. Um, and I just want to say thanks. And I, I'm so sorry, but I forgot the lovely lady who's helping. It's fine, I'm just here because my wife's helping. Your name is Oli Olivia. <laughs> Olivia, thanks Olivia, you've been helping too. And, Olivia of course. Oh. Thanks, Olivia. Thanks, <laughs> and last but not least, and I have to say, it wasn't without teething problems and room issues. We have the most incredible Julian here doing yes, our sound Julian. engineering. <laughs> He's super calm, like, yeah, he's just super calm in the face of a few challenges this evening and just brilliantly handled. And thank you very much, man. It's really appreciated. Like, we're so lucky to have this set up. 
It's like we definitely feel the vibe of like turning this place into a respectful venue. Even though these are like our breakout rooms here at ICMP, it really helps to have these guys involved because they help create the vibe that you're all walking into. Now, we're talking about vibe here, girl. So, <laughs> we are going to have a, a couple of songs uh -huh. from our guest uh -huh. star here tonight, Michelle. I can see everyone here is in love, so. Nah, man, I'm feeling the vibes. <laughs> <laughs> Totally. It's been amazing. I've really loved listening to all of your stories and your songs. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. We feel very Thank honored. Thank you. So we're going to get two songs from you, please? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Give us two. <laughs> Would you like me to talk about the song? Yes, please. All right. So <laughs> that is the right thing to say, Dave. Well done. <laughs> 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 Um, okay, so this one, I'm trying to remember when I wrote it, maybe 2000 or 2001. So this is a breakup song. This is a pissed off breakup song. Mm. This is the breakup song that, you know when you break up and the person has a relationship with someone else and then realizes that the grass really isn't greener, it's just yeah. grass? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, oh, hey, hey, how you doing? Uh, no, no, no. That's that song. So this song, um, I wrote this. It was actually really cool because um, Mark Hill, who is with um, Artful Dodger, who's the original Artful Dodger, um, I was signed to EMI Music Publishing at the time. And they were like, we really want you to work with Artful Dodger. And I was like, what, who's the Artful Dodger? Really? Like House and Garage? What? Um, and I was like, I don't even know how to write that music. Like, I don't know. So there was like, just meet with him again, tea and coke. <laughs> Mark's a coffee guy, so, and he loves food. So we got on like a house on fire. Um, and we met in the West End in a hotel um, and just jammed and just talked about music and what we liked, etc. So he, then he invited me to Southampton. He lived in Southampton in like this stately kind of manor house vibe that he'd kind of half of it was a whole studio set up and then the other half was his living quarters. So I was like, this going up there. And we came up with Think About Me. So Think About Me, as I said, it's like, this is actually a personal experience. This was m my experience yeah. of, um, of a breakup and just feeling really broken hearted, really like losing myself in, in this person and then them meeting someone else and going, bye, see you later. It's now working and you're like, I thought it was me and you. I thought we were a team. What's going on? Um, yeah, so I wrote this. Think about me.
remember that song it's just uh, still just so, it's so beautiful re-release it come on <laughs> You're like no but um yeah that that's just gorgeous so what are we gonna hear last michelle we've been so lucky to have you can we just have another round of applause for you? Um, all right so this one I've only done like really old songs. Ne maybe next time when I come, I'll do like. Next, new songs. I like that next time, people. Yeah, right. Next time, <laughs> she said it. You heard it. <laughs> um, so this was um, the story behind this was we actually wrote this song. So I wrote this song with um, two brothers. Uh, they had a production company called Big Pockets, mm. and they were based in Hammersmith. And I'd known them for like ever. I'd known them since I was like. 16 or something like that. They used to be in a group called Rhythm and Bass, oh, okay. who um, Wayne Hector came out of that group. Wayne Hector is like one of the biggest songwriters in this country. And he came out of that group. And um, so they went into production. Wayne kind of went into writing and Ali also went into writing. And um, we, we used to just write together all the time. So like you find people that you just feel comfortable with and you write with them all the time just because. Mm -hmm. So we wrote with them, we wrote this song, but this song was actually, we were pitching it for Tom Jones. So when you hear it now, listen to it in that, that. regard, and <laughs> it's like, oh yeah. So um, we pitched it for Tom Jones. It was, a, I always call this my lucky song because um, there's songs that have their own life. And this song, I always say this song has legs and it's a song that keeps on giving. And I think it's my lucky song because it was the last song I wrote before my daughter was born. So it was on hold for Anastasia. And then we got a call from Malcolm Dunbar, who was V2. And he um, a and Liberty X. So he called me directly and was like, Michelle, it's Malcolm Dunbar. And I was like, OK. Um, <laughs> and he's like, I really want this song for Liberty X. And I was like, Liberty X? Are you sure, brother? Really? Um, and he was like, no, 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 we wanted him to do this song. So the, the thing was, and this is another thing I would say as well, if you're really confident with what you've done as a song or your production, fight for it. Mm -hmm. So we, we said, yeah, but it has to be first quarter, it has to be A-side, and it has to be priority, and we have to produce it. And it was like, oh, but we got another bigger producer to do it. We're like, nope. You love the vibe. If you love the vibe, that's us. Yeah, yeah. Mm. 
So literally I had my daughter the 14th of January. They came to my house five days later and rehearsed it. <laughs> when I say it now, it's like crazy. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, they came to my house five days later and then five days after that, we went in the studio and recorded them. And then literally two months after that, it was number one. So we, it, we did the right thing to fight for the song. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so this is just a little. I hope I remember the words. Oh, be fun. <laughs> oh yeah, so if you know, do you guys know this song at all? Yeah. All right, so oh. if you know the chorus, please mm -hmm. sing with me. Just a little bit high, just a little bit 
radio play did that song get I mean god I mean it was number one but it's still you still hear it all the time now right it's you know just what it's just been tune. resampled oh really yeah a producer called Billen um and you guys know Jinjin official somewhere oh, yeah. they've just done a collab and um they actually got me to come in and re-sing the chorus oh amazing yeah so it came out on Friday it's called <gasps> work it oh fab congrats on that that's that's when you know it's a good song as well right that's like when it you know, still man. works man. yeah yeah it's like it's got that's what I say it's got legs it's like 20 years old and it's still doing its thing gosh amazing amazing oh man that was just so awesome uh, I just want to say thanks again to Dave as well Dave what's yes. your surname I'm so sorry Austin. Dave Austin I can remember that Dave Austin on guitar guys <laughs> and the wonderful amazing inspiring Michelle Escoffery here as our guest tonight <laughs> And again, I'm just going to go around and remind you of all the amazing talents we've had playing tonight. The wonderful Leo here. Over yeah. the you are a good studio audience. The lovely Antonia. Yes, yes. The fabulous Abhinav Tenzin. And the gorgeous Cairo. So yes, thank you everyone again. Thanks to Massa. Oh. Thank you. Thanks guys. Thank you very much. I do not even remember my day today with my children during half term. Thank you all for wiping that out of my brain. Thank you all for being here. Guys, remember our next songwriting circle is Monday, November the 29th. It is open to all songwriters, BACM students to come and apply to be part of this. And please do not hold your songs back from us because we will find you and them. <laughs> so if you don't think you're ready, believe me, I never think I'm ready either. You're never ready, but the song is ready. Just bring it bring yourselves and please do jump on board with our songwriting circle thanks again to everyone who's been here thank you guys beautiful it's a wrap <laughs>